for 48. Check them out every single weekend until 3 p.m. And uh, also check out their uh, wrestling company, Synergy Wrestling, based out of uh, the Manville, Hillsboro area of New Jersey. You can check them out on Facebook and, of course, their website. Uh, just a couple of our sponsors that we have. We'll get to some more of them later on. Uh, one of our sponsors uh, took care of us for the holidays, uh, hooking us up with free dinner last night. So uh, we'll have to give them a shout out as well. As all the uh, new contracts have gone out for the new year. So uh, pretty much uh, as far as I know, everybody has signed back on with the Damage 365 Radio Network. So uh, we will be back for season number seven. So to recap. Some of the things that went on in uh, 2018, I mean, we got literally got off to a flying start when it came to, uh, you know, the brand new format, which was, you know, we got tired of the same old, same old. And um, <clears throat> that's pretty much what it was. Everybody was doing basically the same format. They were talking about independent wrestling. Uh, they were talking about WWE, Impact, uh, you know, what else? The Bullet Club, New Japan, ROH. It was just the same old, same old boring stuff, doing some random interviews here and there. So we decided, you know, we wanted to change it up. We did that for for six, uh, almost six years. So, so five seasons we did it for. And we decided that we wanted to change it up, and we changed it up by... You know what? Let's use the show to help independent wrestling. Let's promote each brand. Let's promote the companies and the states that they're in and the workers that work for them. And let's expose the garbage that unfortunately is in this industry. And that's kind of what we wanted to do from the beginning. We didn't know it was going to, you know, kind of blow up, uh, you know, right from the beginning. And it, it was just one after another of people getting in touch with us, giving us information and phone numbers and uh, just stories of just just garbage. I mean, just utter nonsense of um, just the, the, the people that are just really shitty in this industry. And I'm, I'm sorry, you know. I mean, right off, the, right off the bat, I mean, the, the name of the first show is Let the New Year Roasting Commence. You know, that was uh, episode one in January, so some of the, the people that we did get to talk to uh, during the year, we had some nice interviews, we didn't want to concentrate on doing too many of the interviews, uh, but you know, we had the, the pleasure of speaking to former WWE star Lanny the Genius Poffo, Ken Shamrock, Dangerous Danny Davis, D'Lo Brown, uh, let's see, independent stars Trina Michaels, Mickey Biggs, Anthony Green, and uh, Rachel Ellering. And let's not forget uh, our crazy, crazy interaction with former WWE star Tracy Smothers. Let's not forget that when we had him on live and uh, he absolutely lost his shit. But all that's been smoothed over as we moved forward in the year. And, uh, you know, he blamed it on someone else. And, you know, we just said, okay, you know, is what it is. Didn't want to, you know, we, we, I always get accused, this is what's funny, I always get accused of, you know, hiding behind the microphone, which is, you know, pretty much the biggest joke uh, on the face of the earth, because anybody who knows me knows that whatever I'm going to say here, I have no problem saying it to someone's face, and I have, so you can pretty much throw that theory out the window, and, you know, I had interaction with Tracy Smothers this in April at WrestleCon. We spoke, and it is what it is. It's over and done with. So, again, I had no problem saying what I said and knowing that eventually I might have to answer to the person that I spoke about, and I have no problem with that because if they're at fault, they're at fault. So... Things don't happen by accident. You know, people screw up. They screw up because they're doing the wrong thing. And they're usually doing the wrong thing by somebody. And you can't you can't do that shit. You, you honestly can't. You can't you can't do shitty things in this industry and don't think that it's not gonna have long term effects on people. You know, whether it's independent wrestlers, 
uh, lying and saying they're doing stuff or accusing them of things or accusing companies of doing things or if you are a company and you don't pay people or you lie about attendance or you lie about things that happen in the locker room or you shit on someone's reputation that has a long term effect on people and your own company and anybody who wants to work with you or now doesn't want to work with you in the future because they don't want to be part of that nonsense you know and that led up to the show that we did called the boss the two shows the boss's chair with with Mike Tartaglia of uh what is it EC whatever the hell his company is um you know we had our show we based our show all on facts photos testimonial from the fans information that was available to us seeing it firsthand okay and then the second show he wanted to get on he came on the show he was asked all the same questions that we covered in the first show and he deflected all the blame to everybody else never took any of the blame to himself so the fallout to that was hilarious because everybody shit all over him he thought he came on the show to air it out and to get his name in the clear and the only thing he did was bury himself even further and that's what makes me laugh and then he goes on a Facebook page that he shit all over them for doing a private show and he goes on their group page and tries to advertise his show. And they just tore him a, just tore him a new ass. It was, it was freaking hilarious. But, you know, this is the crap that sometimes you have to deal with. Okay? We had a problem after June's Legends of the Ring show. That was the 26th show. There was nobody there. It was, it was desolate. It was a ghost town. And we had a problem with the show prior to that. And we voiced our opinion. And we thought that between our opinion and a lot of other promoters that do business with them, voice their opinion, we thought that something going forward would have been done. And then the 26th show was was terrible. And I had a, a long sit-down conversation with, with the one of the owners. And I took that information. It came back to the, sh- the next show. We went over that. Got it all out. We had Terrence Brennan the following show to uh, talk about it as well. And then they went into their 27th show and the vendor room again was a ghost town. So you can't blame it on us. You can't come to us and say that we're shitting on you when exactly what we're saying is true. You know the saying, if it smells like shit and it tastes like shit, it looks like shit, it's probably shit. Good chance. So you can't come to us and say, you're shitting all over us, you're bad-mouthing us, blah, 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 why are you doing this, you know, this is bullshit. No. Only thing I am doing is saying the truth. If you don't want to hear the truth, that's a different story. Then that's what you need to say. Look, you know, I know we're struggling. I know our shows aren't doing well. Help us. Give us some suggestions when we do that and you go to your next show and you do zero of the suggestions and struggle again then you don't care about the vendors you don't care about the promoters you don't care about the talent that's being brought in the only thing you care about is the people you're bringing in and putting in a private room and the money you're making you could care less but without the vendors and the promoters the people they're getting in the door and they're never making it to the vendor room So, what's the point? And you might as well just do private signings. You might as well just have an elite signing like we did with Emma. You rent a a room in a hotel, a a corporate meeting room. You set them up. You have customers line up outside. They paid or prepaid, whatever the case. They go in. They they take a picture. they, They get some autographs and they leave. That's it. An elite private signing. Open to the public. Why bother having a convention anymore? Don't have conventions just to pat yourself on the back and say, I got 27, I got 28, I got 29. Who cares? As everybody knows that's listening to this show, I can give a shit how long anybody's been doing something. If you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. I don't care. I've been vending for 35 years. That's great. But you're bringing the same people over and over and over again for the last five, six years. So what, what did that prior 25 years experience do for you? Nothing. Okay, we're in 2018, soon to be 2019. If you're still doing things the way you did in 1997, 
then guess what? The time has passed you by. Don't shit all over the younger group of people that are doing this because they're bringing in bigger names and more expensive price tag talent that you don't want to spend the money on or you just refuse to spend the money on. Don't shit over the new guys. Don't call them marks and saying that they're ruining the business. They're not ruining the business. They're continuing and keeping the business alive. Just like any other business or any other sport, eventually the torch has to be passed. Many people refuse to do so because of ego and pride. But if you want to stay in the business that you love so much and you've been doing so long, then you have to evolve with the business. You have to improve your skills in the business. Okay, back then when you didn't have social media, it was a lot harder to advertise talent and people that you were bringing in. Now it's all at your expose, all at your fingertips. And you're still not drawing. Whose fault is that? It's not the new guy's fault. You know, it's one thing if the new guys that are, that are doing this are doing it incorrectly and and hurting the business by not paying people. And we and trust me, yes, there are people out there. There are promotional companies that pop up all over the place, especially uh, around big event and WrestleCon. They just magically appear. And I said this once, and I'll say it a thousand times. If you want to improve conventions, fan base turnout, quality of talent, and the reputation of promoters and booking agents, then require them to have a legitimate uh, promotional business with a tax ID number that corresponds with that company's name. If they don't have it, they don't come in, they don't bring talent. I don't care if there's 10 vendors in that room now, but 10 vendors can now bring in three talents each. That's plenty of people. But if you're going to stuff the room with 35 promoters, which 10 of them are bogus, and another five are sketchy, and another five probably paying the person with with the gimmick they're making that day, That's stupid. You're just ruining your business. And I'm I'm so set on it. Chiller Theater, you can't get a table at Chiller Theater unless you have a tax ID number. I think they should improve it where the tax ID number has to match your name because you can use anybody's tax ID number, which I think is foolish because God forbid something happens and you turn around and get sued, whoever's number you're using, they're liable in that lawsuit. Pay some taxes, people, you know? Everybody's so worried about going on Facebook and bragging about how much money they made, which 85% of the time, they're all full of shit. They're all saving face. People aren't blind. You can see people sitting at a table and doing nothing for four or five hours, and then they go home to Facebook and brag about how great they did that weekend. Well, uh, you know, unless you're, you know, ghosts are coming up to your table and getting autograph and paying... I don't see how that's even, you know, remotely possible or mathematically possible. But again, it's just people saving face. People who make legitimate money don't go on social media and brag about it. It's their business and their business only, and they don't need to brag about it. They're back the next show or doing something bigger after that. That's how you know they're making money because they know how to carry over their profits into the next big thing. The people who don't make money or barely break even are people who bring in the same people over and over and over again because they don't know how to take that chance because they're afraid of losing money. (coughs) Excuse me. So, I don't know. I I, I wish there was a way we can can push for this, but I just just know. know, People are just too money hungry and greedy and you need to stuff as much money in a room as possible. And it's more of an ego thing than it is a educational business thing. But, um, you know, and then when people want to start their own conventions, they get shit all over. Oh, this guy's a mark. Oh, he's just spending all his money. He ain't going to make any money. He ain't going to do this. They ain't going to do that. Blah, 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 blah. Not, let's see what we can do to help this person. 
Let's see.